Hi, in this tutorial, we're going to model a paperclip in Autodesk Fusion 360. Now the first thing that we want to do is create a sketch on the top plane. So let's come over here to planes, and we can look at the three different planes that make up our model. You can see that the XZ plane is the top plane that we want to use because it's on this original face. So if I come over here to the top right and I click on top, you can see that we've now rotated to the top of our part and we're looking normal to this plane, the XZ plane. Now I'm going to come and rotate this with these two arrows and now we're looking directly at the top. And from here, I can start a sketch on this plane by coming up here to where it says create sketch, click on it, and we're now creating a new sketch. So the first thing that we want to do is come over to create. Usually we would come over to either the line, rectangle, circle, tool, one of these, but we're going to come down to create. And let's scroll to slot, and under slot, come to center point slot. And from here, now that you have the center point slot selected, I want you to click on the origin to place the center of the slot on the origin. And when you drag down, be sure to drag in line with the origin. And we're going to drag this out to about here for now. And once we've created our slot, we can now set a couple dimensions for it. So come up to sketch dimension, click on this line and this line. And let's make this 0.421 inches. And you're going to see that that's already converted to millimeters if you prefer millimeters. At this point, we want to set a dimension to basically dimension the top of this arc and the bottom of this arc to each other. So the way that we want to do that, and the, the way that is the um, easiest and most accurate, is to come up to line and create a line that's horizontal at the top, as well as a line that's horizontal at the bottom. And if you select this line and you select the arc, holding down shift on your keyboard, you can come over and click tangent. And that's going to make the line and the arc tangent to each other. Let's do the same thing here for the bottom. So I'm going to select this line and I'm going to select this arc. And that's going to make them tangent to each other using that constraint. So hit escape. And now we can set a dimension between them. I'm going to make this dimension 1.865 inches. And that's going to come out to 47, about 47 millimeters. So now we have our slot. And you can see that the lines are have turned black. And the reason for that is because this slot is fully constrained, meaning that it's fully dimensioned. Um, there's, there's nothing that's really missing here. Um, if you try to click on the point and drag it around, you see that it does not move. That's because it's, it's fully constrained. Um, if some of these dimensions were missing, we would still be able to drag around and manipulate the shape accordingly. So that being said, um, let's continue with our design. The next thing that we want to do is we actually want to click on this arc and delete it. And once we've deleted it, let's come up to create and let's come down to arc and create a three-point arc. Let's click on this point and we're going to drag out and you see that if you if you hover horizontal to the first original point you can set how far away you want it to be from the original. So we're going to set it to about here and we're going to drag out and if you drag it out until it's tangent you're going to see that it turns blue here on the right on this point right here. So we're going to click down, and now our arc has been created. So from here, as you can imagine, this dimension doesn't mean anything anymore. So if we want to keep our dimension here accurate, we're going to have to delete it. 
And we're going to have to do what we did before. Click on the line, click on the arc while holding down shift, and click tangent. Now the line is moved up to this arc that we've created. Now let's set back that dimension for the overall height. And we're just going to hit enter. And from here, what we want to do is we want to come up here to line, click on it, click on this point, and drag up. And we want to drag it to, let's say, uh, about here. We can always set a dimension later. I'm going to click down. And if you, if you don't hit escape or you don't do anything, you're going to see that it, it drags out a line. You can actually click on this original point, and if you drag up, it automatically comes out with a three-point arc. So that's going to save us a couple seconds of time here within our design. So we're going to just place it here for now, and we're going to drag down to, let's say, about here. And now we can set some more dimensions so that we're accurate. So what we want to do is come over to Sketch Dimension, and let's set a dimension, let's say, between this line and this line. And I'm going to make this one millimeter. And we're also going to set a dimension here on the length of this line. So I'm going to make this 28 millimeters. And from here, there are a couple dimensions that have not been set. And for that reason, I can still manipulate some of the dimensions here. Now that's a little bit of a problem. Um, we don't want it to. We don't want that to be the case. Um, so I'm going to add a couple more constraints and a couple more dimensions to be sure that our model is is fully constrained and that we don't really run into any issues. So I'm going to click on this point, and if you're wondering where this point has come from, it's actually the center point of this arc. So if I, I click on this arc, this is the center point of this arc. Whenever you see random points floating around, they, they are not as random as you may think. They actually relate to something, oftentimes. So this center point is a great way to control this arc. Because when I move the center point around, if I dimension it, then this arc has to follow. So I'm going to click on this point, and I'm going to click on this point as well. And if I come up to horizontal slash vertical under constraints, I can set these to be horizontal with each other. And as you can see, that's very powerful because all of a sudden, a lot of these lines have turned black. They're now fully constrained. I'm going to set uh, one more dimension here, at least just for now. I'm going to click on this line and this line. I'm going to click down. And with this in blue, ready to be typed in, I'm going to click on this one millimeter right here. And that is going to relate these two dimensions. Th the reason why this says D5 is because this is dimension number five of our model. So having clicked on this, that sets it for this dimension. Now when I hit enter, these two dimensions are related. FX means that it's that this dimension is related to another dimension. So we're just about done here. One more thing we want to do is I'm going to click on this center point of this arc and I'm also going to click on this line and I'm going to click on coincident and you're going to see that this has already been set. I'm just making sure of that. We want to be sure that this point falls on this center line. So I'm going to hit Control Z to go back, and it's good to see that that constraint has already been added for us. Now, this can still move up and down, so we want to set a dimension to stop that from happening. We're going to do the same thing we did last time. Come to line, create a line across, click on these two, make them tangent, going a little faster now, and we're going to set a dimension between this line and, let's say, the bottom line. And I'm just going to hit enter. 
And we're now pretty much about finished with our um, sweep uh, profile right here. So if I hit finish sketch, we now have our uh, sweep ready to be swept across. But there's one more thing that we need, and it's our actual uh, profile that we're going to use to sweep across. So what we've created here really is the path. This is the path that our sweep is going to follow. And the profile is the shape that follows that sweep. So what we're going to do from here is we're going to have to create a, um, a plane, a custom plane. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to come up to Construct, and we're going to click on Offset Plane. It's the first thing that comes up here under Construct. So click on that. And what we want to select is the, um, the plane that's in line with this point. So I'm going to show you what that looks like right now. I'm going to click on our view cube to kind of move around our sketch. And if I first select this plane, you're going to see that this plane is in line with this point. It's going, if I select this plane, it's in the correct direction that I want my custom plane to be in. So the same way that you can create a sketch on either a flat face or on a plane, you can create a plane and create a sketch on it. So let's do that. I selected this original origin plane, and now I'm going to select this point. I'm going to have to come down to Object, and when I select two objects, I can now select this point, and you're going to see that it lights up, and let me orbit this a little bit. You can see that I've offset this, um, this plane with a new one. So that being said, um, this is what we want. I'm going to hit OK, and this plane has been created. So from here, let's click on the plane, and with it selected in blue, we can come up and hit Create Sketch. And we're now in the sketch. So from here, I can come up to Center Diameter Circle, but before I do that, I want to rotate this a little bit because I want to be sure that I'm starting my sketch right on this point. So let's come up to the diameter circle and we're going to just create a circle here. I'm going to select the center of this and this point. And the same way that we did before, I can make these coincident. Now what I'm doing here is I'm actually making two different planes coincident to each other. They're at right angles to each other. So if I rotate you can see that they're actually perfectly um, 90 degrees from each other. Now we're going to set a dimension for this circle. So I'm going to come over to Sketch Dimension, and I'm going to set a dimension here for 40 thousandths of an inch, or about one millimeter if you would rather work in metric. Uh, I prefer to work in freedom units. <laughs> so from here, we can now create our sweep. So I'm going to come up and hit Finish Sketch. And if we come down to Create under Solid, we can come down to our Sweep. I'm going to click on Sweep. And as I mentioned before, this circle is going to be our profile. The profile is the shape that follows the path. The path is the are the, all the lines that we created before. So I'm going to click on Profile. And you're going to see that this closed shape comes up in blue. And I'm going to click here to select path. And I'm going to select this path. And you're going to see that it's going to uh, sweep it along that path. So we're going to hit OK. And that's our paper clip. And if you'd like, you can come back to the original sketch, right click, edit sketch. And you can change things around. If I make this 1.5 millimeters, you can see that it actually changes this dimension as well. So if I finish this sketch, it's going to update accordingly. 
And this looks a little bit better, looks a little bit more realistic. And we're going to leave it at this for this tutorial. I hope you got a lot of value out of this and um, follow me in the next one. Thank you.